Hello everyone, Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video I'm going to go over the basic disassembly or teardown of your Ice River KS0, KS0 Pro, KS0 Ultra, or AL0, which is an Alfium specific miner, while the other three were cast specific. However, this also will include any future miners that are based on the same shell or body. This is an aluminum body that is has no active arrow on it except for the smaller fans that come included with it or whatever you attach. This is me attaching this fan. This does not come with your unit. So it's just gonna be this giant heatsink, which is a passive heatsink to help keep this device cool. Does get hot to the touch, which is why they include a warning sticker on there. Uh, but these little fans are meant to cool the chipset, MOSFET, so on and so forth. To get into this unit, first thing first, we need to take off the side panels. There are four screws on either side that allow you to take these side vents off and that will improve ventilation or airflow into the body of this chassis to improve your thermals. Not so much performance, but more or less thermals. However, I will warn that the screws are soft and you wanna be very, very careful because if you use a cheap screwdriver and you have the normal Phillips head, you could wind up stripping out uh, the screw if it's over torqued. It shouldn't be over torqued from the factory but when you go to tighten it or put it back on, just be careful that these screws are soft and they will tear apart or the head of the screwdriver will tear apart. Additionally, when you take off the side panels, one of them will have the void sticker on it. So when you remove this sticker here, that will stay on there. There's no way to get by that. The manufacturer will find out that you tore down into this unit. Once you have the side panels removed, then it's just focusing on these six screws here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna go ahead and take those off now, and then we're going to lift gently up, trying to pry this plate, right? This is all one plate. We can see it separates from the main chassis, and that also houses some thermal pads to cool our various chips or the back side of the chips right here. You can see the thermal pads right there. When you go to pull this up, if you're not too careful and you're too harsh, you could rip your thermal pads, but it's no big deal. Just go ahead and grab, your, uh, grab you some more thermal pads from your favorite supplier. Just to give you an example of what I mean when I say that these screw heads are soft, if I were to take this screw on and off multiple times, I will start to round it off, making it hard to put back on. So you usually wanna either use an iFixit screw uh, kit um, or a screwdriver head that fits the unit. Now that we have that last screw out of the way, to pry this off, what I like to do is I put my finger, there's two lips here. So one is right here, right? So I'm gonna be lifting with my fingers while holding this edge. You could do it on either side. And you can see the void sticker there too. So um, again, if you're concerned about that or live in a country where they can enforce it, they will stop you from getting a repair. However, in the United States, we can fight that. So I'm just going to be very carefully prying upwards I might rip the thermal pads, but again, I am prepared for that with replacement thermal pads from GPU risers, or again, Fuji Poly. I even have some thermal grizzly over there and that mess of wires, but we're just going to carefully with both hands, one on each side, lift up. This one's already starting to move. You see how that's moving right there? So I just need to very carefully lift up. Don't be afraid and be mindful of the fan wires. So we did tear our thermal pad right there. We're gonna go ahead and replace that. There's our two four pin PWMs for our inside fans. Note how the wire routes, right? So the wires, one tucks in underneath and one tucks in um, around this bottom heat sink bar. So just make a mental note, unplug your four pin PWM and let's get down to the actual board. When removing any wires, whether it's a four pin PWM or any type of connector, never pull from the wire itself, you will depin your connector. You wanna kind of put your finger on the side and kind of grab this uh, connector and pull out. Pull from the connector, not from the wire, that will save you a lot of trouble. Now again, here's the thermal pad, so we're gonna to need to remove any residual uh, thermal pads off of this, because when I put this together, I'm not planning on taking it apart. However, if you're planning on taking it apart and putting it back together multiple times, this thermal pad technically still will work. Even though it's ripped, if we put it back in the same place in which we got it, it will be just fine. And these thermal pads are on the back side of the chips, helping adding additional cooling, right? So it's sinking the heat, not only to this backside plate where the two fans are, but it's sinking the chip heat 
to this entire aluminum fin stack, which is why putting a 120 mil fan uh, will help cool these devices so much better. Now for the screws. As you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total. These screws are trying to produce even mounting pressure for all the chips that are down each of these rows. Let me go ahead and remove these eight screws and show you the other side. Now the screws that held this board on have spring retention on it, unlike the screws on the outside. There's no need whatsoever for you to torque down on this thing as if you're trying to remove or torque your lug nuts to spec. That's completely unnecessary. Just torque it until it's flush, until it's even and it can't go anymore and you will have your board securely fashioned back to the aluminum heat sink. Now to remove this particular board, if it's cold and you haven't been running it for a while, the thermal paste is going to be very tacky. But if you've been running it like I have and just turned it off for this video, you should be able to very gently pry up, again using my hand on the aluminum side of the, the, the housing, right, either on the right or the left, and I'm kind of just very gently lifting up, okay? And on the back side, we can see all of our chips. Let me go ahead and get a better spot for you guys to see all this. There we go. There's chip one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve chips in total, and you can see all the components on here. Now, the pinkish stuff that we're looking at is the thermal paste. Not that this thermal paste is bad, but uh, generally speaking, replacing any stock thermal paste from a manufacturer because they buy it in bulk and it's often not as conductive thermally um, as the better applications or products out there would generally help thermal. So we're gonna clean this off with uh, some isopropyl alcohol. And let me go ahead and just lay that against this right here. I like to use, uh, it's okay to use 70% isopropyl, but 91% isopropyl alcohol uh, to help remove that thermal paste, same as if you were to clean your GPU die or your CPU, remove all that from not only the heat sink, but the uh, board itself, and then removing if you're replacing the thermal pads. Again, you do not have to. This tear does not mean it's the end all be all of your device. You can put this back together and that thermal pad will do, do its job if you can get it to match up with the tear on the other side of the board. But we're going to clean this all up at least the CPU thermal pass, uh, paste, and we're gonna be using some uh, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme. Now there's multiple ways to remove thermal paste. Uh, you can use a thermal paste applicator, like the spatula, to try to carefully scrape off some of the thermal paste that's already on there. You can use the guitar pick from the iFixit kit, but both of these I would just urge caution because if you make nano scratches in your heat sink material, the thermal paste just has to work harder in order to make a good mating surface. Uh, as far as the CPU or the core dies, you know, you see some of the thermal paste that's left over, don't worry too much about that. Most thermal paste applications or thermal paste in general is non-electrically conductive. Um, but when you clean this off, be careful of the SMDs, these little tiny guys around the each individual core or chip because you don't wanna break these guys off. There is some thermal paste on it, but I wouldn't be too worried about that. But you just wanna clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol. I like 91%, 70% will work just fine. But coffee filter, paper towel, applicator, guitar pick, doesn't matter. Carefully remove the thermal paste. So I removed it using one of these very carefully or a coffee filter. And then on this guy to be very careful because I do not want to scratch these CPU uh, cores. You can see they're already scratched up already. Um, I use, you know, a paper towel and uh, 91% isopropyl alcohol. But now this thing is completely tore down. There's no need to tear, tear this down anymore. You could remove the standoffs, replace the standoffs, whatever you want to do. You could take this out and print your own uh, heat sink technically if you have the funds and the capability to do that. But in this case, this thing is tore down all the way uh, minus the four screws on each fan to remove that down. But now I'm going to assemble this. I'm gonna use Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme to add thermal paste to these cores, set it back in there, torque it down to spec using the spring retention. And you'll know that spec because when you go to torque it, you can't go past a certain point. You just don't need to crank down on it like it's, again, working on your car. 
but removing this all out of the way replacing this thermal pad that we have right here and matter of fact what is that thermal pad size let's find out i like to use a caliper to do so and it looks like we got a piece hanging off right here that we can use to gauge the thickness this is a caliper and we can use it to gauge how thick something is right your die sizes thermal paste sizes the whole nine yards it's not going to work for large automotive purposes but you do have inches and millimeters and we're just going to see what the size of this thermal pad is and so i'm going to lean because this guy got smushed obviously because of the heat sink I'm going to lean around 1.5 millimeters. I believe there's some online references that might say 2 millimeters, and they will squish out. Even if you chose a thermal pad that's a little bit bigger, right, like this is 1 millimeter, but you chose 1.5, it will because the heat sink, you could see how it makes an indentation in there, will squish out the thermal pad and smush it out left and right, still covering the entire surface area. I got a plethora of thermal pads to choose from around here quick note that when you are assembling this unit again in the future what I like to do is I get every screw started just to make sure they're going into the respective spots or marks and then I just do a couple quarter turns just to get them started and then I work from the inside area out just to make sure that we're we're making the CPU dies mate with the new surface and the new thermal paste so here 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 cross hatch pattern and then working my way out doing quarter turns at a time just to make sure that we're even with our pressure across the board as we install it. And that's pretty much it. I just want to show you the teardown process. Doesn't matter whether this is the older models or the newer models. If they are in this frame, this aluminum heat sink frame, they should all be the same teardown process. Again, four screws on each side to remove the side panels. Then you got six screws on the plate where the two fans are and then you got another eight screws to remove the board from the actual main heat sink uh, base and then you can replace your thermal pads your thermal paste so on and so forth i will be including uh heat sinks on these little guys right here these four little mosfets to improve my thermal performance on this particular guy but that's going to do it for this video so please do me a favor on the way out hit that like button make sure to get subscribed hit notification bell to stay up to date so i'll check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Thank you.